Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CADWORKS and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. Our quick agenda, now don't start looking at the thing bouncing up and down. We're going to take a quick look at modal extraction and then uh, review the input in Caesar 2. It's going to be more of a navigation course. We'll take a look at the results, of course, and then uh, we'll look at how we will uh, use this data or, or how we can improve the data that, that we're creating out of Caesar 2 and use it as an acceptance criteria. Now, uh, the introduction, modal extraction, Eigen solution. Eigen is German for characteristic. It's not necessarily uh, a, a engineering term. It's a mathematical term, uh, characteristic values in, in uh, matrix operations. Well, this will be the extent of the math that we're going to run today. Uh, I have a, an equation here summing all the forces and moments, uh, forces on a body. We got our acceleration term, our damping term, our uh, stiffness term, and it's balanced by some applied load. Now I can't solve that equation, okay? So I'm going to make it simpler. I'm going to remove the damping term from here. It'll come back later, and I'm going to say that the uh, load applied to this is, must be harmonic. Well, if the load is harmonic, then the response is harmonic. So I will say my deflection will be some magnitude as a sine of some frequency times time. Okay, there's my harmonic response. The acceleration or the second derivative with respect to time is negative omega squared a sine omega t. So I notice that that a sine omega t is there and the acceleration is just negative omega squared x. I plug those terms back into this equation and there's my equation uh, of the forces balanced on that object now. I'm going to make it simpler. I'm going to say, let there be no applied load. If I do that, then I can simplify this equation, factor it out, and I have this term times x will equal zero. Now, there's two solutions to that. One is where x equals zero. Pretty simple. This thing's just sitting there. Or I can get motion when the when this term is zero. So when that equals zero, I can get motion without any applied load. And we always see a term like this, the, the frequency at which that motion occurs is square root of k over m. Now that frequency is an angular frequency, it's radians per second, and that's for free oscillation. There is also a, a matching shape to go with that oscillation. That's why we'll talk about a, a, a frequency mode shape pair. Okay? There is no magnitude to this shape. We're talking about shapes, not magnitudes. And uh, it's important to, to consider it this way. Uh, this frequency and mode shape, although it might be a very complicated piping system, is treated mathematically as a single degree of freedom system, unique to itself. It's orthogonal or any other mode of vibration, and it can be analyzed independent of, of the rest of the system. So there's our math. Now here's some examples of, of uh, modes of vibration. We often see this uh, a wagging lollipop. We've got an anchor down here, and we uh, see it wag. We've got a mass up here, and we've got a stiffness, and it just wags back and forth. Square to k over m, we can calculate that frequency. That is a single mode of vibration. We're watching the mass wag back and forth. Here, we're watching the, the mass bob up and down. I could go into a dark room with a little LED on that mass, and I'll, all I can see it is to go up and down. It can't move any other way. That's the def definition of that system. Now, in the middle of the screen, we have a two degree of freedom system. We have two masses. And now, I can, since I have two masses, or two degrees of freedom, I can describe two mode shapes. The first mode shape will be considered when both these masses are moving in the same direction. And you could think of another response where they are moving in opposite directions. But that's the extent of my definition of this mode shape. I have no magnitude. I'm just showing the shape, or the, the characteristic shape of that that two degree of freedom system. Now in our, our third example here, we have a, a cantilever with n de degrees of freedom. We have lots of masses along this uh, cantilever and we just watch how they move with respect to one another. Here's the first mode of vibration, the second mode of vibration, third and fourth. Now, the best way to consider this is you're in outer space. There is no gravity to make this beam sag. In fact, I developed this model from a four-inch schedule uh, standard wall pipe that's 50 feet long. It's going to wag around a lot like this, but this is the shape, the mode shape of these frequencies. 
and these frequencies range about um, this is about 0.5 cycles per second. This is at about three cycles per second, eight cycles per second, and 16 cycles per second. So we have a shape and a frequency associated with these pairs. Now, uh, I got an email yesterday that, uh, that well, if you're going to talk about modes of vibration, make sure your audience understands that we are not talking about um, circumferential modes of vibration. That is true. We are only following nodal displacement, the distortion of the pipe center line. We are not looking at these circumferential modes where we see we get these uh, lobes in our pipe wall. If a thin wall, large chamber to pipe, you can get the wall actually wobbling in and out or along its length. That is not Caesar II. We are a beam model. Okay. All right. Um, dynamics is kind of a difficult topic. We'll grant you that. But also, getting the data into Caesar II uh, needs some, some uh, look at. So we're going to take a look at the dynamic uh, input processor. And when you go into the main menu of the program, you're going to see this button right here and also that uh, menu item. So I could circle that button and that will take me into the dynamic processor. Also, uh, before I can go into the dynamic processor, I'll have to have that input model error checked. If I do not have any nonlinear conditions or no um, hanger sizing to perform, I do not have to perform the static analysis, I can go right into the dynamic processor. So I can click on that button or I can click on the menu item in the drop list, I can hit dynamics. You see the same um, icon on the, on the screen and that will take us into the uh, input process, dynamic input processor. Now here's the menu you'll see as soon as you come into the dynamic input processor and look at all these tabs we have to work with. Uh, this is going to be kind of confusing. Uh, so what we're going to do first is select the analysis type, okay? And by doing that, you see we have listed modal. I can select modal, and that will then bring me into a much shorter list of tabs to work with. And this is what we're going to focus on today. The, uh, the screen is set up with uh, some control at the top. Uh, we will create the input and run the analysis from this window. Uh, if I wish to stop my input session, I can click on the Save button. When I'm done with my input, I can click on the Error Check button. There's a little red X. And when I want to run the analysis, and the run will also do the error check and save the data, I click the Running Man. Okay. The screen uh, has a, each, each tab has a list of, of lines. Uh, these are all example lines, see the text there, examples. and I will then add more lines to this data set. I use the plus sign up here to add lines below the current line. I use the negative button to delete any selected lines, a line or a group of lines. I can select them by clicking on the, the row number and maybe shift click. I can delete all three of these by clicking on zero, shift clicking on two, then clicking on the negative button. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars, please Google Caesar Insider Blog.